Robert Scott and thought provoking. Um, uh, uh, what's a video? Thought provoking story from India. Um, and the principal thing I want to talk about in this video, although I'm going to cite the case itself, is is the idea of how influential the media is in terms of swaying people's thoughts on a certain subject or a certain case when people might not necessarily know the whole picture. Um, so I'm going to read out the story um, just so you know the context. I'll try and read it as fast as I can because I know it can be a bit um, tedious just reading something out but I'll try to read that and then uh, I want to share some of my reflections on the role the media plays because this is a very, very important issue. So, first of all, this is a report. Um, like I said, I'll try and read as fast as I can. India fight back sisters. Has the fight gone out of them? This is from the BBC World News. Six months after two Indian sisters made headlines when a video showing them fight free alleged molesters on a bus went viral, there's still no clarity on what happened that afternoon and there remain many unanswered questions. BBC Hindi's Devi Arya travels to the northern town of Rotak to investigate. On the 28th of November, presumably this was 2014, 22-year-old Arti and 19-year-old Pujab boarded a skate ram bus on the way home from college. In the 42nd video on that bus ride, Pujab can be seen hitting a man with a belt while he holds Arti down by her collar. The second man is partially hidden behind his friend. The third man has not seen it and at what point he joins the duo is still unclear. The three men were arrested on charges of sexual harassment but later released on bail. They've denied the allegations against them. Local police chief Shashank Anand said it took a long time to trace witnesses as the road transport department does not keep a list of passengers. Identifying passengers was a painstaking progress process. Even after we traced them, only a few to agreed to testify and they too requested that their identities be kept secret, he said. Pradeep Malik, the lawyer representing the accused men, showed us many signed statements saying they were from the passengers on the bus. All these witnesses tell us the truth behind the video, he says. They said that there was no sexual harassment and that the sisters started to fight for a seat on the bus. The statements, copies of which are with the BBC, narrate the same sequence of events. In fact, two statements are identical except for the names and signatures of the witnesses. The sister's lawyer, Atar Singh Pawar, alleges that the statements are fabricated and that the investigators are not making enough effort to verify them. Three women who are being presented as witnesses were in their village at the time of the incident, but when other villagers came to the police to testify, the statements were not taken. Um, so then the question is, has anything uh, changed for the sisters? At first glance, their life looks unchanged, except for the constant presence of police women who have been assigned to protect the sisters. Artsy and Pooja appear calm, but beneath their calm exterior, something seems different. Pooja says, if faced with sexual harassment again, they won't fight back. We will always be haunted by the crack faces of our parents. They have heard nasty remarks about us from the police and face pressure to withdraw the case, she says. The sisters are, were, were healed as heroines, but things changed a few days later when a second video emerged showing them attacking another man. The Haryana state government, which had announced an award to honour our bravery, cancelled it later and that is lowered our credibility, said RT. Now everyone questions our character. They say we go looking for trouble and assault people for money. The real problem is with women raising their voice. The sisters alleged during the lie detector test that they agreed to take as part of the investigation. They were subjected to humiliating questions about their sexual history, a charge police refused to comment on. Um, and regarding the accused, the main accused, Kuldeep, 20, is soft-spoken and appears too shy to meet my eyes while answering my questions. On being asked to if his friends tease him for getting beaten up by women, he shakes his head to say no. Deepak, another accused, is more forthcoming. There's no sexual harassment in our area or on that bus route. Nothing happened that afternoon. The women just stood up and started beating Kuldeep with the beat belt. The police should have done something by now. Our mind is not at peace and there's constant stress, especially about our careers, he says. Kuldeep and Deepak had cleared an initial test to join the army, but after they were charged with sexual harassment, they were barred from appearing in the final exam. In two years, they will pass 
the maximum age limit for the exam. Our entire village is supporting us and that's a big relief. Otherwise, these days, only women's voices are being heard everywhere, says Kuldeep. Um, a mere mention of our team Pooja in the village has many men sniggering and there is consensus on who is at fault in the incident. If girls keep beating boys like this, all boys would be dead. Then what would the girls do? An old man asks. The women celebrate the fight back. Haryana is infamous for having the lowest sex ratio in India, and such incidents are rare. A group of middle-aged women giggle as one of them says, I haven't seen the video, but I've heard that the sisters use her litter built like a whip. That is fantastic. It's not unfair to support those sexual harassment or rave teasing, as it is locally known, is considered normal with a certain level of accepted tolerance. Why did they react? So many girls travel on buses, they don't go around beating up boys, says one woman. Female students in RT and Poaches College too see them as heroines. Who doesn't want to react? We face harassment every day, but we have to be patient. If only we knew that our parents would support us the way these sisters' parents did. We wouldn't be scared to fight back either, says a student. Okay, so uh, I, I just felt the need to read all of that out to give you the context, so we'll, we'll put a link to this. I will say, though, that Indians have responded quite angrily to the BBC report. The general consensus on the, on the Facebook link to this was that the BBC's bias and was only taking the side of the girls. Um, I don't think that's entirely fair. I think that they have reported the the um the accused uh their argument as well um but what i want to talk about is that with a case like this um with the general idea of rape in india there seems to be very polarizing opinions um there does seem to be a gender gulf here in that a lot of women are taking the side of the girls a lot of men are taking the side of the boys in the village at least Online, um, I did see some Indian women uh, say that the BBC had got it wrong and these girls had been proven to be liars. Um, I don't know the whole case, and this is the point I want to make. Um, a lot of people, when they see these sort of news stories, any news stories for that matter, comment on what they know based on what has been reported. Virtually 99.9% .9 of people who read or about news stories are not on the ground to really know what's going on and that's not that's not no one's fault because you know you can't expect people reading in your store to be on the ground it's not anyone's fault but it is a fact that um, we need to be very cautious about how much we take as absolute fact when there's a new story that is not going the way this is um, I mean I'm not going to say in this video that the girls are innocent or the guys are innocent because they simply don't know you know i could make a case for either party and then i end up feeling rather humiliated because the they were proven to be wrong i mean it could well be that the girls are lying it could well be that the guys are lying we just don't know um we'll have to look at the the things that have been presented now the lie detector test um is a very critical thing and uh the nature of the questions, if you know, if they were humiliating, that's wrong. But it is also to ascertain uh, guilt in these young men. And if the girls fail the lie detector test, lie detector tests are supposed to be 98% accurate. So that does raise serious questions. Um, I'm not in India, so I can't, and I'm not female, so I can't talk about personal experience about this. But I have seen a lot of Indian men complain that there is a growing misandry, um, what they call feminazism in India, in that this victimhood mentality among a lot of Indian women is getting to the point where by all Indian men are being vilified. Um, again, I, I can't comment on that because I'm not there, but there does seem to be a widening gulf between Indian men and Indian women um, on these issues. And that in itself can't be good for society. Um, I think it's important to recognise that uh, India does have a rate problem. I've seen a lot of people say things like, uh, they've shown these sort of statistics and say, oh, but look, there's more reported crime in the United States and Sweden than, than they give a list of countries. My response to that is it doesn't really prove anything because reported crime and actual crime is not the same thing. 
The fact that more rapes are being reported does not mean that more rapes are happening. It just means that more women or men feel comfortable coming forward and saying that they've been victims of sexual abuse. In, uh, in conservative rural areas, not just in India, in many parts of the world, there is a stigma around rape victims. That's a fact. So that's why I don't want to rush to judgment and say these girls are definitely liars. But nor am I going to rush to judgment and say that the men are definitely guilty. The girls may well be liars. Um, but the does need to be due process and all the evidence needs to come to light. And I think the media has a very important role to play in in terms of having a responsible approach to this, including the Indian media. I mean, a lot of Indians are attacking the BBC, but I, I don't think NDTV is, you know, my impression is it's incredibly sensationalist in the way it reports stories. So to point a finger at the BBC and say, oh, the BBC is being biased, um, is, NT, is NDTV objective on these things? I'm not sure if it is. What I've seen of NDTV is it tends to be very sensationalist on a lot of stories. Um, I will say one thing though, um, one side effect that seems to be coming about from all these reports of rapes happening in India is that Indian men are being collectively vilified. And I do think there's a real danger here that innocent men will be caught up um, in vigilantism. Um, and this is not a case of putting the plight of innocent men from vigilante mobs over the plight of innocent women from rapists. It's, you know, it's not one or the other, both are terrible things. I.e., if an innocent woman is raped in a brutal way, that's a terrible thing. But it's equally terrible if an innocent man potentially gets lynched for something he hasn't even done. So, you know, uh, I really think there needs to be responsible reporting on these things. And there needs to be, the BBC, I can understand at some level why people got upset because. The, the exact heading of this is India fight back sisters has the fight gone out of them. It's sort of, although that's not exactly taking their side, it's still slightly geared in their favour. Um, slightly. So maybe a better headline would have been India fight back sisters, what is the true story? That to me would be a neutral, neutral sort of headline. It wouldn't be taking one side over the other. Um, so let me know your thoughts on this. Um, if you're from India, what, what's your opinion? Um, do you think that Indian men are getting on very tired with the same brush? Or do you believe that there is a problem in India and that you feel, do you think these girls are heroines? But more importantly, um, what what do you think is, what role do you think the media has for in in reporting these things? And don't just talk about the BBC, I'm talking about media in general here. Um, I mean, Indian media also has a very important role to play in this. So, I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Cheers.